Thanks to the organizer and the special thanks for their interest in, in having uh, our experience presented at this uh, highly stimulating uh, conference. So what I am uh, going to talk is uh, about uh, this uh, center that we established in our university and in Gemelli Hospital. Uh, so let me tell you first uh, why, uh, how this uh, uh, initiative came out. Uh, this was uh, done through the interest of the private company, this Kubik Group, uh, and having their technology and expertise in uh, putting a large-scale hospital, which is a very big hospital of 1,500 beds, and uh, also the hospital had interest in education, because education means quality, of course, and also the Catholic University, because the hospital is the teaching hospital of the Catholic University, had the interest of uh, you know, doing something new for tackling the resistance of uh, uh, educators. And uh, we just wanted to you know, innovate our teaching, our way of teaching. So, uh, uh, my agenda uh, is uh, just a few slides to tell you the use of simulation in medical education. Uh, I know all of you are aware of this technology for uh, education and evaluation also, and uh, the clinical simulation by this particular uh, methodology in the IPSA Center, and how to deliver real-time virtual patient encounters to dist distant educational centers. You know, this delivery may allow to minimize cost, to share cost, and maximize, maximize educational opportunities for a larger population. So, uh, what is simulation? I don't need to say what is simulation in this setting. If you ask normal people uh, what is simulation, their mind might go to a soccer player who simulates snap or falls in order to, you know, to gain penalty points and so on penalty shots. Um, in training, simulation is uh, uh, used in certain situations. I mean, in, for certain professions, you need to train with simulator before getting uh, the license of, uh, you know, to do some type of activities. What about uh, education? In education, is very is used in a very variable fashion. Uh, although uh, it is an important tool for education and, and this responsibility of educators to provide the clinicians with the best training, of course, and is an important tool for evaluation because uh, traditional evaluation you heard about focuses on cognitive domain while we need to assess uh, professionalism. And this is, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a problem uh, without... Uh, Either you do with the real patients or with virtual patients, you cannot do, but uh, just by assessing knowledge, you heard many times this issue. I also would like to underline that there are important ethical issues about the simulation. First of all, it's our responsibility to ensure best standards of care and training to our physicians, as you, of course, uh, there is an important tool for error management because in the setting of simulation, you can do a lot for this. And also, it's a matter for patient protection. Uh, using patients as learning instruments is only justified when all approach to the minimize risk has been taken. Of course, this is, you, you can understand this immediately. And also, simulation allows trainees' first encounters with real patients to be a higher level of uh, technical and clinical proficiency. Um, and also, finally, error management. Errors, uh, you know, occur at, at any level of medical education and activity in clinical setters, in setting. Errors must be prevented, of course. And this can, can be done by dealing with errors in simulation, be, because in simulation, errors are a, a very good opportunity for learning. Uh, so let me uh, say, uh, 
about, well, let me concentrate now on clinical simulation. So I am going to explain what we are doing for clinical simulation in our APSLE center. Uh, the Gemelli Hospital dedicated 1,200 square meters to, of, of uh, its uh, surface to the center of a simulation for patient safety. And uh, what is important that in addition to the traditional uh, facility of simulation and, uh, you know, uh, with uh, mannequins and everything, a high fidelity uh, simulator or delivery or laparoscopy and so on, we have the cell methodology, uh, cell methodology to cell methodology for clinical training. The IPSA center dedicated about one third of the surface of the center. And uh, I would like to underline that this methodology won in 2009 the World Summit Award for uh, you know, innovative educational project in medicine. Uh, but uh, Javelis was the first hospital hosting this methodology. Uh, what is about? It's based on experience, as you see, uh, reported by a sentence of Oscar Wilde, uh, experience uh, gives you the test first and then the lesson afterwards. And we want that our physicians uh, get the experience in a safe environment. So we have uh, the possibility of a real-time interaction with the virtual patient. I will show you a video for this. And uh, we uh, pr reproduce a, a patient, typically patient journey. Uh, we have uh, interaction with the patient of a group. Uh, I will say, uh, tell you some details on it. And then we have a debriefing and a discussion in a large group. And uh, generally, we have uh, three interactions with the patient. The three interaction may be a few minutes uh, away uh, of the patient journey, uh, or months or years away for uh, chronic disease. We might follow the natural history of the disease, the changes in treatment, and so on. And we have, at each interaction, at the end, we have decisional points. And uh, decisional points the, uh, request an answer. Each participant expresses his choice using uh, an iPad. Uh, by looking at, uh, we make uh, available the clinical diary, the radiograph, radiographs, and uh, we divide the, uh, the overall group of generally 28 participants in four groups with different colors, identified by different colors. And then, in turn, each, uh, all the groups are in the Electra room. At some point, uh, For each patient, okay, each group deals as a direct interaction with one patient. So we have a course for with presenting four patients and give the opportunity to each one, each group to interact directly with the patient. At the end of each patient journey, we discuss the answer, what happened, the answers given by the group as a whole, the, the group who, which interacted with the patient, and the individ individual answers given by the, the other, the remaining learners, which are in, in, the, in the electoral room. And we discuss guidelines, we present evidence, we discuss what happened. So we just our model is based on the experiential learning cycle, which is uh, we, give us the we give the learners the opportunity of having an experience, then we discuss what happened, and then we discuss everything on the basis of the guidelines, and we discuss the errors, the, what is recommended, what we should know. Now, if uh, I think uh, 
it's better to watch this video. It's a three-minute video which gives you an idea what's going on. Hello, Joseph. How are you doing? <laughs> Hello, doctor. <coughs> <coughs> well, since I'm here, I'm not doing well. Uh, I think that's apparent. Yes. Um, I was referred to you by a good friend of mine. He's the head of the gastroenterology unit of, the, of this hospital, and he told me that you have uh, quite an expertise in, <coughs> in oncology. <coughs> now, uh, Dr. Villa has probably shown you all the exams <coughs> about my case, and may I know your name? I didn't get your name, sorry. My name is Dr. Kappas. I'm sorry, what's your name? Kappas. Kappas, okay. Well, thank you very much. <coughs> and <coughs> the story, <coughs> is that I've been having this dry cough for just about a month and as you will know I, I have a lot of friends in the medical field now. Yes, Joseph, I've seen all your results and we discussed it already and we checked everything in the PET CT and your MRI from the um, brain and everything. And the thing is that we don't know what you have in your body. We don't know the name and this is something we need to find out. And this well, that's why I'm here. And I want to That's why you are here, and that's, yes. that's what we will do. But I, I think it's quite evident we're speaking about probably some... Evident is that some, there is some, something Hold on, growing. doctor, let me speak. I'm sorry. I, I think it's quite evident we're speaking about some form of lung cancer. Actually, we are speaking about lesions in your lung on the left and on the right side and lesion in your brain. We can't speak about lung cancer. We speak about lung cancer if we have the um, secure diagnosis about it, and we can only get it if we get the histology. No, I, I, now let me explain something about me, okay? First of all, I'm a very influential person. I, I'm a businessman, I know a lot of people, and I try to work with people who are empathic. So my question to you, doctor, is this one. What, has, what do your guts tell you? I mean, that's why I, 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 I know you've seen the exams, but how about you, your feelings about this? I mean, what do your guts tell you about this? The feeling is that you <coughs> might have lung cancer, but we don't know. You might have another, another sort of cancer, <coughs> but we need to do the histology. And what we do is we do a bronchoscopy, take a biopsy, and uh, send it to the pathologist, and he will tell us what you have, and then we talk about what's going on. Okay, well, I understand this, and uh, let me tell you something. I've done some research through the internet during this month. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm a person who likes to read, and uh, I mean, uh, I, I know there are lots of alternatives and therapies out there. I mean, I'm speaking about uh, beta docs. Sorry to interrupt you, Joseph, but if you talk about therapy, you must know what you will do. What will you therapy? You need to know what the cancer <coughs> is called, the, the disease is called. You can't go with a car and take um, gasoline if you have a Porsche, you, you don't can take diesel. So you, we need to know if we want to treat your tumor or whatever it is right, how it is named. And then you can go and ahead with your internet research, okay? Uh, this was uh, you know, a short interaction and uh, there were problems, as you could tell in, uh, in the interaction patient, physician, you just had one physician dealing with this patient. And by the way, the physician made a mistake about the fact that uh, bronchoscopy, uh, which uh, did not apply to this particular case because the lesion was very peripheral, so the patient had to undergo a CT scan guided biopsy. Uh, in any case, I mean, uh, this, uh, can you imagine an interaction of uh, 20, 25 minutes, then it, it raises a lot of issues. A lot of issues, a lot of questions, a lot of uh, discussion about the modality of interaction, about the, the, the documentation, patient documentation, which is presented, in a, uh, made available. How is this realized? Uh, well, the studios are not in the hospital. I, we could not, uh, you know, uh, have room or expertise for uh, this kind of, uh, of things. And we have uh, the situation that the studios are in Padua, which is very close to Venice. And uh, there is a direction and we have, uh, you know, 
We have an actor, and uh, of course, everything is based on a screenplay preparation, which takes a little bit a while, some expertise. We start from real cases, which, are, which we think may be uh, very, you know, very good as uh, education, for education. Um, the, the, the interesting thing of this methodology, it is completely different way of approaching knowledge because uh, we have an emotional involvement of people and uh, they are, you know, they, they receive questions which are, they have to directly face a clinical situation which is, you know, maybe difficult for them and they are allowed to, you know, to make mistakes, to make diff wrong choices. And then, in the debriefing a discussion, we, we discuss a lot about existing evidence, about the guidelines, and people watching from the Electra room may have observation on the way history is taking, has been taken, and so on. So, we... Uh, fields of application of this methodology. Physicians, of, of, uh, obviously, but also, you know, we can do uh, interprofessional uh, education. We can carry out uh, interdisciplinary programs. And of course, uh, it's a, a different way of uh, getting knowledge. Uh, knowledge is important and is uh, as an important stimuli when it, it Stimulus when it starts from a real case, so you are, you know, you are stimulated to learn, to, to review the guidelines, the evidence, and so on. But I, we focus on other skills, uh, clinical reasoning, uh, most importantly, and communication, and uh, professionalism in general, uh, for physicians, for nurses, or for administration people. Uh, I think it's. Um, I think that uh, it goes even beyond uh, knowledge, uh, uh, competence, proficiency, and expertise. Uh, we just want our uh, physician, our learners, uh, you know, getting an inside, a mature way, this, a mature desire of learning, in a, by providing learning in an en engaging uh, environment. Finally, I would like to, to underline that uh, we, can do, we can combine this simulation with skill training, as uh, Dr. Irons, Irons po pointed out just uh, some minutes ago. Uh, we can see a patient and before delivery and after delivery and uh, discuss uh, complications, follow-up, and so on. Um, well, this is an enormous attractive potential, uh, this center, and uh, we, uh, you know, from all uh, Europe and Italy, we get uh, learners, but uh, what is very interesting, that uh, the QB group owns a truck, which is in Nuremberg today, and uh, delivering education. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's uh, a facility allowing us to have the Calypso in the Electra room uh, anywhere in Europe, on the outside Europe also, and we have a real-time audio-video connection, and we have also a, a transportable release which can be, uh, you know, established anywhere for weeks or months. And, uh, you know, educational centers may also have a stable uh, accommodation, a stable an establishment of the cell uh, facility as we did in the Gemelli Hospital. In summary, um, there are major ethical reasons to pursue uh, simulation-based medical education. And uh, we think that experiential learning with uh, virtual patients is ideal for clinical skill training and should integrate all the other simulation techniques for a complete education. 
and uh, the, our center allows to exploit the teaching potential of a large-scale hospital. A lot of stimuli come, come from the hospital uh, because we have a lot of innovations, unusual cases, brilliant diagnosis and mistakes are equally good opportunities for education. And the available technology and facilities allow to share simulated patient journeys with centers located anywhere. Thank you for your attention. Uh, <laughs> let me acknowledge the contribution, of course, of the Kubi Group, Carlos Entemeri, Luca Quareni, and Luca Sangrica, who is there. <laughs>